So here is a sound sample of me talking in this room before acoustic treatment. As you can hear, it's very reflective and open and roomy sounding, and there's not too much great speech intelligibility. It could be considered hard to hear me as well. And here is a sound sample of me talking in this room after acoustic treatment. And as you can hear, speech intelligibility is much higher. It's way more clear what I'm saying. There's not weird reflections or interference from the room. And my voice should be a little bit more boomy, a little bit more bass heavy sounding. Hey, Victor Gudera here from Recordio.com. And we are here setting up our new studio slash office space. As you can see, this is in my garage, so it's a home studio. And I wanted to take some time and film a video for you on how to make your home studio sound amazing and show you how to save thousands of dollars in the process. And so we're gonna take your room from sounding like this. To sounding like this. So in home studios, we generally have a bedroom or a garage or a small room of some sort as our studio space. And you know, the main problem we deal with is an unpleasant sound reflectivity, as you can hear in my voice in this room, uh, a buildup of low end frequencies or weird or funny sounding echoes. And so the main thing that we can do to combat this is with acoustic absorption. And, you know, and there's a lot going on with room acoustics and the science there, but we're gonna keep it really simple with this video lesson and show you something extremely effective on a lower budget. So with every studio that I've designed, I always use something called prime acoustic absorption panels. It's a two inch rigid fiberglass absorption panel uh, with, covered with a breathable acoustic cloth. And those as a prefab or pre-made solution are great. I highly recommend them. And if you're like me and you like to get dirty a little bit and you like to save a lot of money, who doesn't? Uh, then I'm gonna show you how to make your own sort of prime acoustic panels. Essentially, we're using the same materials here. And uh, you know we're gonna make those at 40% of the cost of those things. And so, you know, make sure that uh, you download the free PDF guide and materials list. Uh, it will be either in the description below this video or on this page, wherever you're watching the video. And so you have that follow along guide and you know where and how to get the materials. And so that's it, let's get started. Start out by either brushing, rolling, or spraying the edge hardening resin around the perimeter and don't be shy on the corners. Allow it to dry for 24 hours. Next, lay out your fabric, mark it at three feet to allow wrapping on the back and you want to have six inches of fabric overhang around the entire panel. Center the panel on the fabric and spray glue one long side first while carefully pulling the fabric up and over to the back and smoothing the edges so it's a nice corner. Next, carefully flip the panel over while keeping the fabric tight and spray glue only the side edge so you can tighten the front of the panel and have no ripples. Always carefully smoothen the corners, not pulling too hard or too light so you have a nice squared edge and no ripples. Then you can flip the panel back over and finish gluing the rest of the four inches of fabric to the back of the panel. Now for the corners. Cut out a square edge as shown here to get ready for the fold. Do a dry practice run of the corner fold until you get it right. Then spray glue inside the corner, lightly hold the outside corner with your thumb and at the end of the fabric, lightly pre-fold it down as shown here and wrap the entire fabric up and over the back of the panel. Then glue that. Rinse and repeat for all of the corners and that's it. On to mounting, I recommend you corner mount one or a couple panels stacked vertically as this will significantly help battle low frequency buildup in your small room. Since we are covering about 20% of the entire room's surfaces, I decided to evenly space the panels in the room both vertically and horizontally. Start by mounting the corner panels, then measure the distance between them and calculate how many panels you could fit equally spaced without too much or too little of a gap. Using a laser level, measure and mark the two outside edges of each panel along the space that you've calculated. 
Then mark six inches inside the panel from each outside edge where you want to place your impaler clips. Since I'm using these small, straight, push-on impalers, I've decided to use three clips per panel. You can use two, three, or four impalers per panel depending on how stable you need them to be on the wall. Now, with the ceiling mounting, I decided to use the garage door tracks to hang a span of one inch steel pipe across for an extremely easy suspension device. Place the cloud anchors 12 inches in from the length and six inches in from the width and hang with the S-hooks. And that's it for mounting the panels in our Recordio Studio. All right, that is all there is to it. And you can probably even hear a big difference in my voice in this room now, just talking. And I wanna reiterate that as a pre-built solution, if you don't wanna make these panels yourself, uh, Prime Acoustic makes an excellent rigid fiberglass board with the same Owens Corning material. And you can also use something called Roxo, which is a little bit less dense. Uh, and, and actually they make a rigid board as well. You could build a wood frame if you don't wanna do the spray adhesive stuff. Whatever you do, uh, the point is to use uh, more of a dense insulation material as acoustic absorption on your walls. And so for coverage in this room, I recommend to do a minimum of about 15 to 20% of the overall surface area of your room. So add up all of the surface area of the exterior walls and floors and ceiling in your room and uh, the amount of material footage, square footage of your acoustic material, your absorption material should be about 15 to 20% to start with. And so in this room, we actually did, I think it was just about 20%. And for placement, as you can see, uh, you know, we spread everything out evenly around the room. The main key points uh, around your mix position are the uh, first point early reflections from your speakers. And so that would be uh, like directly off of the speaker cone, bouncing off of the wall and coming right into your ear. And so that's off the, to the sides, the ceiling and the back wall. So those are the main key, you know, the first early reflection points that we want to attack first. And uh, of course, you know, out from there, we want to just sort of spread an even coverage for the rest of the room. And so for the ceiling uh, panels, you know, I was originally going to do something like I did over at the uh, Drumio Studios, which is a, a perfect laser level grid up on the ceiling, uh, drywall plugs and eye hooks and hang the, suspend the panels off of that. And, uh, you know, I wanted to simplify it. I had the garage door track. So very simply uh, just put the, uh, the steel pipe across and was able to suspend the panels off of that. And so now that we have a really nice acoustic treatment for the entire mix position and the rest of the room, we are fully ready to record and mix some awesome sounding instruments to a much more accurate degree in this home studio space. So if you want more tips on how to improve your studio sounds and recordings, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and check out recordio.com where we have all kinds of tips and tricks and courses constantly being released. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in some more lessons.